Hi folks. In this video I'm going to show you how I built a winder for making axial flux generator coils and talk a little bit about how I like to make them. A stator coil can be easily made by just wrapping some enamel copper wire around a wooden dowel, but you get back what you put into it, and in this case the coils need to match certain dimensions and specifications in order to get the most use out of them. Most axial flux generators have what's called an air core stator, which basically means there's no iron in the stator like a conventional radio flux design to pull magnetic flux into the coils. Eliminating iron from the stator eliminates the cogging resistance that's created when the magnets try to lock over the iron cores as they pass by the coils when they're spinning, which makes the generator operate more efficiently and allows the blades to respond faster, especially in low wind conditions. The iron that would normally be in the stator is moved to the magnet rotors instead to help direct the magnetic flux into the coils, and because of this the stator needs to be as thin as possible to decrease the air gap between the magnet rotors and maximize flux density in the coils. They're sometimes called pancake generators because they're so thin, but this compact design calls for a specific size and shape for the coils to fit in the stator without making it too wide or compromising power, which takes careful planning and a robust winder to hold up to the abuse and produce uniform and consistent coils. I'm starting a new turbine build series next month for you folks who've been patiently waiting for updates on the Reaper turbine that I built a few years ago. It still works fine, but it's just too big for my needs and my classic controller, so I'm breaking it down into two smaller turbines with new high voltage stators. I'm going to keep one turbine for myself, but I'll probably sell the second turbine if anyone's interested. I'll share more details when the time comes. To begin the winder build, I cut a piece of 2.5 inch square tubing into a couple of triangular legs, which I welded to a piece of 3 inch square tubing to serve as a base for the winder. The tubing is around 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. I wanted the base to be heavy and sturdy so it can support two 10 pound spools of wire without toppling over. Next, I cut and drilled some 1 inch square tubing and welded them to the top of the base to serve as posts that will hold the wire spools, a pulley, a digital counter, and a sensor. After the base was done, I turned and threaded the winder spindle that the handle and coil mold will fasten to. An alternative would be to just use some half inch threaded rod with washers and hex nuts, but I recently got the lathe and figured it was a good opportunity to practice and make use of it. The spindle is going to rotate on these self-lubricating bronze bushings, which will be fitted to the base later.
Once the lathe work was done, I attached a 1 inch thick plate to the spindle for fastening the coil mold to, and then made the handle by welding a half inch rod to one end of a 3 16 inch thick plate and a hex nut to the other end that will thread onto the spindle. Then I gave everything a few coats of paint. While that was drying, I 3D printed some parts for the final assembly, like this grooved pulley that rides on a small bearing, as well as the coil mold, a wire guide, and a bracket for holding the digital counter. The coil mold is fitted with a small magnet on the back. The sensor for the digital counter picks up the flux from the magnet when it rotates by to count each turn in the coil. Notice that the center of the mold is a small trapezoid with slightly tapered sides. The center piece is what the copper wire is wound around, and the tapers allow the finished coil to be demolded easier without coming apart and unwinding. When it comes to making coils for air core stators, the size and shape of the centerpiece should match the size and shape of the magnets being used. If the center of the coils is smaller than the dimensions of the magnets, then the coil windings inside the perimeter of the magnets won't be energized and will be a waste of copper. If the center of the coils are larger than the dimension of the magnets, then there's a waste of space that results in a lower power density from the turbine because more copper could have been added or the stator and rotors could have been made smaller and lighter. Ideally, wedge-shaped magnets and coils would make the most use out of the circular space they're confined in, but wedge magnets are extremely expensive, to the point of being cost prohibitive for a DIY generator. The next best shape for packing the coils into as tight of a space as possible without driving up the cost is a rectangle. I like my generators to be as narrow as possible to minimize the amount of turbulence they create in front of the blades when the wind hits them. The size of the magnet rotors will depend on the size of the coils and how well they pack into the stator. So I prefer to give the coils a slightly trapezoidal shape so they'll fit tighter around the rotational axis. This also means that the first few turns of wire won't be energized, but it's a small sacrifice that pays off in material savings elsewhere and in better performance because a smaller generator creates less turbulence and the blade set will perform more efficiently. Before I start winding, I like to wrap a piece of electrical tape around the coil mold with the sticky side out. When the coil is finished, it needs to be taped up before it's demolded to help retain its shape, and I find it's easier to put the tape in place at the beginning instead of trying to fish it through the coil after winding it. I start winding by extending the wire about 8 inches beyond the mold. This end will be the start end of the wire, and the extra length will be used to connect to the next coil in the same phase when assembling the stator. The trick to winding good coils by hand is tension and patience. Of course, you can buy a machine to do this, but it's not going to produce the same result that you can produce with a bit of extra care and attention. How tightly and carefully the coils are wound will make a big difference in how well they fit in the generator. I like to keep tension on the wire with my hand guiding it into place as it's being wound, stopping every once in a while to adjust or press the wire more firmly into the mold. Holding tension on the wire can be tough on the fingers, so I included springs between the spools and the hex nuts holding them in place to help put some tension on them and give my fingers a bit of a break. Once I reach the intended turn count, I cut the wire from the spool in a location that provides another 8 inches or so of extra wire for connecting in the stator later. Then I wrap it around the mold and tape up the coil legs before demolding. The reason that I built this to hold two spools is for parallel winding low voltage coils. This just means that instead of winding one wire into a coil, two wires are wound side by side and connected to each other at both ends of the coil when it's finished so that they're both wired in parallel. 
Because most off-grid systems use 12 to 48 volt systems, a low voltage generator is often used with pulse width modulation controllers to charge the batteries. The controller locks the generator's voltage output at the voltage of the battery, and because voltage is proportional to RPM, the blades won't exceed a certain speed and will instead rely on increased torque from the wind to increase the current and power produced. The purpose for parallel winding coils for low voltage generators is to decrease the internal resistance and increase the ampacity of the coils without having to use a thicker wire to carry the current safely. I avoid using anything thicker than 14 gauge for a residential turbine because thicker wire can be really difficult to wind into a proper size, not only because it's tougher to work, but because the larger diameter wire results in larger spaces between the windings, and the coils end up being a lot bigger than they would be if two thinner wires were used to make up the same cross-sectional area as one thick wire instead. The thinner wires will pack into a tighter space much better. Some of you have probably already figured out that a low voltage turbine is more costly to build and install than a high voltage turbine because the extra current demand for the low voltage generator requires thicker wire and transmission cables, but they're also less efficient when coupled with a pulse width modulation controller instead of a wind power capable MPPT controller like Midnight Classics, approximately 20-30% to 30 less efficient actually. In contrast, a high voltage generator is designed specifically for charging with an MPPT controller, which doesn't lock the generator's output at the battery voltage, and thus doesn't limit the rotor speed, so the blades are free to use the wind speed to spin faster to generate a higher output voltage with less current to produce the same amount of power. This means that the coils for a high voltage generator can use a lot less copper than a low voltage generator because it doesn't need to handle high current. Here's an example of the difference between a coil for a low voltage turbine, which is on the left, and a coil for a high voltage turbine on the right. The low voltage coil only has 50 turns of wire, but the windings are double strand and nearly twice the weight of the high voltage coil, which has 70 turns of single strand wire. Both are designed to produce the exact same power with the same blade set. As I mentioned earlier, I'm starting a new turbine build series in a few weeks, so I'll go into a lot more detail about how to design a simple axial flux generator for home use, and the math involved in calculating flux density, how many turns the coils should have, cut in voltage, etc. Until then, I'm getting back to work on the street bike now that the new battery is here and ready to go, so keep an eye out for the next video in that series coming soon. Thanks for watching, and take care, folks.